Hi everybody, I'm Jim Stavridis, the Dean at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, and I'm here with one of my favorite faculty members, fellow Greek American, Elizabeth Prodromo. She is, I'm proud to say, not only a faculty member at the Fletcher School, she's an alum, na. She uh, did her MA here. She's a Tufts undergraduate, so as we say in the trade, Elizabeth, a double jumbo. Uh, and then she went over to MIT and got her PhD in political science. She teaches a, a fascinating mix of courses here that kind of center on the importance of religion in international relations. So there's some regional components to that, so certainly some security studies, some philosophical components to it. How did you settle on this as the area that you would focus upon and teach, Elizabeth? Tufts, I think, was instrumental mm -hmm. in uh, my interest in religion. I did an IR and a history undergrad, uh, nice. double major here, but very interested always in the Balkans and in the Middle East, and uh, religion was, was always a you know, big piece of the coursework here in terms of uh, the politics of the region, the history of the region, and the contemporary kind of either peace or disorder in the region. We're watching horrific scenes unfold in Mosul. Um, how do you think, just as an example, how do you think the religious peace uh, plays in that conflict in that situation in Mosul? I think Mosul's really interesting and it's, it's a tragedy, number yeah. one, um, and it's sort of a case study, a terrible case study, number two, but I think it's interesting because it reminds us that religion does matter in terms of contemporary geopolitics, but I think the question is how. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of Mosul, uh, for sure, I mean, insofar as this is an offensive to mm -hmm. dislodge the Islamic State, we're talking about eliminating a, an extremist version or interpretation of a particular faith tradition. Um, at the same time, it raises questions about uh, whether or not post-Islamic State, post-Caliphate, uh, there will be sectarian cooperation or a continuation of sectarian conflict and also confessional conflict. So Sunni Shia issues, uh, Muslim, non-Muslim, in particular the so-called genocide minorities, Yazidis mm -hmm. and Christians. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it raises the issue of we need to think as policymakers mm -hmm. if we're interested in terms of stabilization in the region mm -hmm. about how religion matters. And it's not enough to say, mm -hmm. well, we know it's relevant, but the question is how and then what do we do in, in terms of integrating mm -hmm. religious actors into a stabilization situation. In your own background, Elizabeth, you've had a chance I think on several occasions to work with the U.S. government. Um, say a word about your work on commissions and reports and that sort of thing because I think it's a, it's a wonderful example of a Fletcher alumna who is not only here in the academic world but has had a great deal of real world impact. I served uh, for eight years in a diplomatic position on the United States Commission on International mm -hmm. Religious Freedom and that is an independent U.S. government agency reporting to Congress, the Secretary of State, and the White House mm -hmm. on religious freedom violations around the world. And I bring that experience with me into the classroom. I think yes. it, you know, it's, it allows me to talk about issues related to religion and state, religious pluralism, and human rights writ large. With the commission, I, I saw firsthand mm -hmm. in places uh, as far afield as China and Russia, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and Turkey, um, how it is that of religious freedom and human rights correlate to, mm -hmm. um, you know, high levels of economic development to, uh, again, robust democracy. Mm -hmm. So we tend to uh, overlook oftentimes mm -hmm. the importance of international religious freedom for um, other civil mm -hmm. and political liberties we, can, we, we know are mm -hmm. fundamental and foundational mm -hmm. for, for democracy. Because of courses like yours, because of scholars shining light on this, because we're having these big conversations, um, I, for one, am cautiously optimistic that we'll continue to move in the right direction. Elizabeth, thanks for sharing your views and Thank your knowledge. You. It's wonderful to spend time with a Fletcher alumna as well as a good friend here on campus. Thank you. It's great to be doing this work. Thanks All for talking. Thanks, everybody.